Hey guys, this is going to be just a short section on polynomial functions. This is more of an intro to section 3.4 where we learn um, graphing techniques for these. So a polynomial has this form, which looks really daunting, but it's just things like this that we've been working with forever. Uh, the important features are, one, the degree of the polynomial, which is often referred to as n. And it's going to be the highest power um, in the of the polynomial. Uh, a sub n is the leading coefficient for that term. Uh, maximum number of zeros. So what the zeros are is how many times a polynomial crosses the x-axis. So it doesn't, this is a maximum number, so it doesn't mean it will cross that many times, but it can. So for instance, if I have x squared um, with, you know, say minus 4, that would cross twice. And the zeros of this are, you know, 2 and negative 2. And so that's what we're seeing here is that's our x-intercepts. Um, the maximum number of turning points equals n minus 1, or 1 less than the degree of the polynomial. So this would be degree 2, 1 less than that would be 1, and our turning point is right there at the vertex. If we're looking at a cubic, um, and not just plain x cubed, but one that had some extra terms to it, it could look something like that. And so we'd see it had 1, 2, 3 intercepts, because it's a its leading term is x cubed, and it has one, two turning points, so one less than the degree. So, um, with the first question we have, find the degree leading coefficient, that should be coefficient, and maximum number of zeros, uh, or sorry, the maximum number of real zeros for the polynomial. So, first off, this thing isn't written in descending order, so if I were going to go and do that, the first term would have really been f of x equals negative 11x to the 8th, and then it would have gone from there. Um, so this is the term that gives me all this information. So my degree would be 8, my leading coefficient is negative 11, and my maximum number of zeros, remember, uh, matches the degree, so that would be 8. Um, if the question had asked for um, the maximum number of turning points, um, turning points would be 7 because it would be 1 less than the degree. Okay, so this chart ends up being really important. This tells us kind of what any polynomial will do in its uh, end behavior or long-term behavior. And by that, I mean what it does is it goes out to infinity. Um, so we have kind of two things at play. We have the power, which was the degree, and then the constant. Um, the book didn't do the best job of explaining this. They really should have had a sub n there. Um, on a sub n. Not sure why they used k on this page and a sub n on the last, but they did. And so um, when we're talking about this side, this is the leading coefficient and the sign of it. So pretty much these boil down to four things. Um, even powers with positive coefficients are just like x squared, because this is like positive 1, so that's positive squared even power. So everything like x squared um, that's positive and even, so say I had um, 17x to the 14th. 17 is positive, 14 is even, and so in the end behavior, which is to say these parts, um, it's going to end up looking like x squared as the x goes to infinity either way. Um, it's going to be much steeper because it's a bigger power and has that coefficient of 17, but if you zoom out far enough, it's going to come in from the top and it's going to leave out the top. Um, the other one that goes with that is negative x squared. And again, that could be negative, you know, 10x to the fourth. And that's still negative and even. Um, and negative, you know, so just does that flip that we saw back in 1.5 with the transformations. But everything negative and even will come in from the bottom and then leave back out the bottom. For odd powers, um, we're using x cubed as our example. And so they always come in from the bottom, leave out the top, just like x cubed. And this one you can kind of think of like negative x cubed. And so for me, I think of those four pictures, and that's kind of how I, I have this memorized. And so then they'll ask some questions with that. Uh, with this kind of confusing notation. Um, but let's see if we can kind of work through these and make it make sense. So number two is describe the long run behavior or end behavior. Um, I've seen it both in different books of this function. So we look at this, and our leading term is 4x to the 7th. So that's what's going to dictate what this thing does. And so this is even, and I'm sorry, it's not even. It's positive, positive, and odd. 
And so positive odd things are like x cubed. And so that's going to look something like that. So um, as x goes to negative infinity, which is this way, f of x, the y values, are also going to negative infinity. So as the x's get smaller, the y's get smaller. So here we would say negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, so that's this way, the x's are getting bigger, then the y values go to positive infinity. Uh, for this one, it's negative 7x to the fourth, which is negative even. And negative even things are going to look like x squared, or negative x squared. And so notice I'm not memorizing the table, I'm just remembering um, what the four basic pictures look like and using that to establish what the more complicated ones will look like. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Likewise, as x goes to positive infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Um, here this is a little bit different because it's, it's in factored form, so I have to figure out what the leading term would have been if I multiplied it all out. And we absolutely do not want to multiply it all out because that's too much work. Right here we have x to the first. Right here we have x to the first. Right here we'd have an x squared. So if you add those up, 1 plus 1 plus 2, so I'm just adding up all of the powers of x, that's going to be a 4, which means if I foil all this mess out, the leading term would be x to the fourth. So that is positive even. And positive even looks like x squared. So as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, y goes to infinity. And then this last one, we have this negative 2. And that's going to be our only coefficient. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 x's. So it'd be x to the fifth. So this is negative and odd. And all negative odd things are going to look like negative x cubed. And so as x goes to negative infinity, the y values get bigger, so it goes to positive infinity. And then as x goes to positive infinity, the y values get smaller. They're getting more and more negative, so that's negative infinity.